Hey, what's going on? I hope you guys can see me and hear me. If you can hear me, if you don't mind leaving a comment in the uh, chat box right now, that would be cool. That way I know everything's everything's working. But, all right, let me uh, give it just a minute here, let everybody filter in. Mute that TV. All right. Here we go. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for showing up for the live. I'm just here to give kind of like a quick update on what's been going on. It's been a real fast month. Uh, actually, it's been a real fast year so far for, for me, Sean Ryan Show, Vigilance Elite. Uh, it's been a slow <laughs> couple months uh, for you guys because we've just been interviewing our asses off. We went down to Mexico. We have a ton of content that we're a little behind on the editing with, uh, but that is all coming out shortly. So I'll just uh, start from the top. So beginning of January, first thing we did this year is we had Justin Hughes out. I told you guys about him in the last live. He's a SEAL who is a phenomenal artist. He paints. Uh, I think he's going to basically be the next the next Leonardo da Vinci. It's incredible what that dude has done and uh, coming out of the SEAL teams. And uh, so that interview is coming. It should be out on March 3rd. That should be out on March 3rd. Then I went down to Mexico about a week after that. I did wind up meeting with Ed Calderon. Thank you, Patreon, for that. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of what we did down there. The reason I say thank you, Patreon, they basically bankrolled the entire thing so that I could get down there and do that and uh, and have somebody watching my business here while I was down there. So uh, thank you, guys. I know most of you are probably already on here, and I just want to say thank you for all the support. Uh, it's what makes all of this happen. So um, anyways, then after that, we're going to uh, talk about some of the stuff we did in Mexico. Then I want to talk about my interview yesterday with David Nino, or I'm sorry, with uh, Peter Schweitzer, who wrote Red Handed. We cover the China topic. I told you guys that I was going to cover the China topic, and I think he was the perfect person, the perfect person to start with. It was a phenomenal interview, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Then I'll tell you about some upcoming guests. And we also had, hey, what's up, Stephen Klein? How the hell are you? Um, and then, where would, oh, David Nino Rodriguez. I just interviewed him, too. That was a really good interview. What a childhood that dude has had. Uh, different. So he is a uh, three-time, or not three-time, he's a world heavyweight champ boxer. Can't remember how many times. But, uh just a super cool guy to be around. Uh, he's got a pretty interesting story. Not my typical interview, but I kind of told you guys at the beginning of the year that uh, I'm broadening the channel. So this is me broadening the channel. <laughs> but uh, all right, we've got enough people in here now. So it's been going for a couple minutes. So these guys, they're coming back. The Vigilance League Gummy Bears. The shipment is on the way, and uh, we should have that set up here pretty t pretty soon. So we'll be selling all the gummy bears. All the other merch, we're getting rid of it. So uh, we're just going to be gummy. <laughs> we're just going to be gummy bears from here on out. So um, all the other merch is about to be pulled. Uh, we're switching some things around, and uh, yeah, we're. We're, we're done with the other merch, at least for a while. Um, so let me get a water. All right. But uh, all right. So I wanted to once again, I'm going to talk about Mexico. I'm going to talk about China and uh, kind of the direction of the channel. 
once once again, um, thank you, Patreon. You guys are phenomenal. <laughs> but um, seriously, thank you guys, because we got a shit ton of content that we're sitting on. We're getting ready to release all of it. It's going to be a busy month. Uh, and I, I think we'll probably be starting in March uh, is when it'll all kind of start trickling out uh, to YouTube. But uh, I just wanted to, before we get into that, I want to talk about the direction of the channel. I saw a lot of comments lately. Yeah, it's weird. You know, we've done a lot of different shit on this channel. It's It started as a gun reviewing channel. And uh, because that's what I used to do is teach tactics. And I know a lot of people miss those videos. If you want those kind of videos, training, guns, blowing shit up, whatever, there's like a hundred something videos of it over on Patreon. You're just going to have to go behind the paywall and support me. Everything else is coming out here. But uh, and also, I just want to thank you guys for sticking around because it kind of made me realize like, holy shit, you know, it was gun reviews and story times and tactics. And that was basically the channel for about two years. And then um, and then. I needed something different. I wanted to get out of that. I was kind of getting bored uh, in that realm. So I wanted to I wanted to start interviewing. We started interviewing and uh, the shit took off. Now we're 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 switching the interviews up. It's not just operators and former military guys that have done phenomenal badass shit. It's also going to be cartel people uh, that are reporting on cartel people, which we've already kind of done that. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk a lot about the the uh, what's going on in China and how that affects us here in the United States, even though I keep hearing I better be careful because I'll get the channel shut down. I don't know. You know what? I think it's important shit for everybody to know. So if they shut my channel down for it, then I guess I'll be on fucking Rumble and and Patreon. But uh but I'm not going to let that shit stop me. I've been worried about censorship and fucking getting videos pulled ever since I was a gun reviewer. I've tried to play by the rules. I think I've done a pretty good job. And uh, and uh, I started getting smart on how I release content so that it doesn't so that it doesn't get pulled. But uh, and I don't really think that I'm being censored, to be honest with you. So there's that. <clears throat> but. Uh, so anyways, my whole point before I went off on that tangent, which is why I have these damn notes, is uh, I just want to thank you guys all for sticking around. It's been a hell of a ride, and we've done a lot of shit on this channel, and we're going to keep broadening. It's going to be almost all Sean Ryan show. We're going to keep bringing in like these special editions about the power grid. The About the power grid, what else did we do? We did the supply chain. And uh, if you are an expert on something, we're now, oh, the next thing we're talking about, I think, I'm hoping, is uh, the crime up in New York City. I'm hoping to get a uh, NYPD officer who is a patron here in the studio to talk about the crime they're seeing up there and the uptick in, uh, in violent crimes due to uh, their dipshit former mayor defunding uh all the police departments up there good job buddy fucking idiot but uh anyways so that's kind of where the channel's going it's all going to be interview type content and uh i did two short pieces with my wife and uh, with my wife katie talking about just real life stuff that we're going through and um and um and we're going to continue to do those. I think we talked about uh, the daily grind of business and uh, how you need to eventually get out of it or your whole fucking life's going to pass you by just trying to make more business. And uh, for us, family is more important. And then the other one was uh, the hotel disaster. Oh, there's my wife right there. Hey, babe. But, uh, but, uh, it's, it's a pretty funny piece. So we're going to keep doing that. I think the next one that uh, me and my wife are going to do is how we met, which was on a gun range. So I would love to interview Mike Pompeo. So more of that stuff will be coming out. All right. Now what you all have been waiting for, Mexico, the trip to Mexico. So, yes, I did. Thank you, Ryan Buckley. I appreciate that. 
the trip to Mexico was fucking awesome. Sorry, I shouldn't be saying the F word anymore. I'm working on that this year. But uh, we went down to Mexico. It was a phenomenal trip. We It went way different than we planned. Uh, there was a lot more activity just in the 24 hours that I got down there uh, uh, of travel time. I got there at first thing when I landed. I got a text from Ed saying, hey, National Guard's rolling in. And they're setting up checkpoints all over the, all over uh, Tijuana. We went to Tijuana, uh, right on the border, and uh, he said that they were restricting a lot of movement. They were restricting a lot of movement uh, because there's some kind of turf war going down there between uh, cartels. So, so that kind of uh, put a damper on our nighttime stuff, which is fine. We did some other stuff anyways, and that uh, turned out good. But first thing we did is we went into, well, let me start here. I was not armed. I was planning on going down there and picking weapons up in the street and getting everything on film, but there just wasn't, once I got down there, there wasn't really time to do that. Uh, so we didn't do it. So, uh, so I didn't do that. So I was unarmed. However, Ed uh, has like that dude's the man down there. Um, so Ed had two, at least two that I know of. Who knows about the stuff that I didn't see? Just kidding. I see everything. But uh, now I had two armed guards with us everywhere we went. Uh, undercover civilian plainclothes guards. Uh, so we didn't draw very much attention with them. But yeah, they were packing. I think uh, Glock, whatever the 40 caliber Glock is, I can't believe I don't even know this shit anymore, but uh, whatever the 40 caliber Glock is, uh, they they were rocking those. And then they had these, uh, I can't remember the name either, but they were HK long guns with, uh, with uh, look like a four power optic built into it. It's uh, pretty cool. And we got a video of that. So anyways, uh, before I dive into the Mexico stuff, Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Before I dive into the Mexico stuff, there is a bunch of behind the scenes footage on Patreon. If you want to sign up, you can go over there and watch it before I release it here. And uh, this is raw, unedited. Uh, I think the thing I did today was of the border. But um, with that being said, everything changed, whole plan changed. So we got down there the first day. Uh, we basically did kind of an overview of the whole city. I'm not going to tell you everything. No, it was not an HK UMP. It was a long gun. I believe it was shooting 5.56. Five, but um, but uh, we got down there, did an overview of the city, kind of took a uh, uh, did a plan, just did a car ride with Ed uh, in a low pro thin skin vehicle. That means uh, low profile, blended in perfectly with the city. Had uh, had had uh, Mexican plates, looked dirty, blended in. Um, four door little sedan, perfect. Nothing drew attention. Wasn't anything fancy that's going to draw attention. Just looked like everybody else down on the street. We actually had two vehicles, and uh, Ed kind of gave us a tour of the city, where the rich people live, where the poor people live, where the cartels are at, where the border is, uh, why, how, what neighborhoods the uh, rich people are coming out a lot of I guess a lot of people from San Diego are moving into the better parts of Tijuana and they are venturing into cartel land to buy fentanyl so anyways I don't know what yeah but uh so that's what they're doing so we kind of talked about some of that and he just pointed out the different sections of the city we got like a great overview of the city and um and uh that's all on film when we got down there, uh, this is going to be a tricky edit. It's going to take us a little bit to edit it all out because we could not get big cameras, sound equipment. We couldn't get any of that stuff in anywhere we went. Uh, we, we we're already um, drawing enough intention, attention to ourselves because in certain areas because uh, I don't look Mexican. <laughs> so... Um, uh, so that was drawing some attention. I wasn't trying to look like that. I wanted to look just like a normal tourist American. That's what I was going for. So 
Um, we weren't doing anything crazy and I didn't want to, I'm not, you know, you want to be a gray man. Sometimes being a gray man looks like a fucking tourist. There I do. There I go dropping F bombs again. Yeah. You can watch all the gray man videos you want on YouTube. I know there's all these gurus out there that know how to do it. Guess what? A white boy down in Mexico dressed up like a Mexican. You know what that looks like? A white boy down in Mexico dressed up like a Mexican. So I wanted to just be a tourist. And uh, so that's what I was going for. And that's what I did. <clears throat> and that was my cover story. So. Uh, so anyways, next day. Uh, there was a big migrant camp down there, probably about a thousand people. I think Ed estimated a thousand people were in there. So Ed had not been in there uh, before I went down. I said, hey, let's take tonight. Let's do a little recon around it. Let's plan our insertion and exfil routes, a couple different, uh, couple different routes in and out. And let's do, a, let's look at where we're going to walk, where we're going to drive, all that kind of shit. So... <clears throat> So, uh, taco recipe shorts. So did a little recon, figured all our, our, our movement stuff out. And then, uh, next morning, first thing we woke up, jumped in the vehicles, uh, um, got down there with our iPhone, which filmed everything. <laughs> we brought all this equipment and we wind up just using an iPhone. And you know what? I think it's actually cooler with just the iPhone because all the shit is like right up in your face, real. There's no like fancy editing, you know, and uh, and maybe that there's something to be said about that because it's not it shows like, hey, we can't fucking we can't freaking get cameras in here. So. Uh, <clears throat> so it's all done and on an iPhone. So anyways, we got down there, took two vehicles. Uh, Ed and I went in, uh, started walking you know, kind of around the camp. And then we went into the migrant camp. Uh, Ed started getting uh, a little uneasy. Uh, he was like, hey, man, if we don't get the hell out, tell that dude to put the camera up and uh, put the iPhone up. But uh, he's like, we can't be recording anymore in here. These people are about ready to start throwing bottles and rocks and anything they can get their hands on. So let's get the hell out of here. Uh, and I... I was like, all right, let's just hang out for a little bit longer. Tim got uh, some more, uh, some great footage of that place. And uh, we were kind of talking back and forth with a couple of migrants from Honduras who came up. And uh, we were able to persuade them to uh, leave that camp and give me a full interview which is pretty cool. And that kind of shows you how desperate uh, some of these people are to jump in a two cars with their, have two armed dudes with them. If they even pick that up. And anyways, they jump in a car with a bunch of dudes with guns and go <laughs> to go get an interview. Uh, and, you know, I offered him, uh, we offered him some money. And, uh, and they took us up. So we took them out of there. Uh, that way we didn't have to deal with any rioting and, uh, and, and we got a full blown, um, interview. Uh, I think a lot of people are probably going to think maybe it's staged because, uh, one of them actually had a make America great again mask. But, uh, if they can look past that, we didn't actually talk any politics at all, and, it, and uh, I didn't take any side on what I think about the border at all either. So uh, it, there's nothing to do with any politics on it all in this entire series. It's only about facts and what we're seeing and, uh, and interviewing these, uh, these migrants and stuff. So, so basically, I'm not going to tell you uh, what we talked about exactly in the interview. I'll just tell you that I got their journey from Honduras, how long it took, what they were dealing with when they were running into cartels, um, how long have they been there, why they want to come to the United States, where their money is going to go when they get here, uh, what the leadership is like in the migrant camp, you know, what are the rules, all that kind of stuff is in this interview. So I think it's a really it's going to be a really good interview. 
The whole interview is basically me asking questions. Honestly, I wanted to bust some Spanish out, but um, because they have that uh, mask requirement down there, I, I could not understand a damn word coming out of their mouth uh, barely at all. So, um, so luckily I had Ed. <clears throat> um, it's hard for me to understand Spanish with the with the masks on. I can I'm pretty good without them, but uh, wasn't <laughs> wasn't happening with masks. So it's basically Ed in the middle. And then uh, what it was was a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend uh, that we interviewed who were the migrants. And I think that's probably about, dude, thank you. I really appreciate that, David. You're the man. Uh, thank you. So um, what I was saying was, I think it's about a 40 minute interview. And, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's really, it's in depth. It's good. But it is on an iPhone. And it's me asking the questions. Ed's translating, and uh, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. So that's kind of the migrant camp. In all honesty, I think that is probably the most informative and best piece of content that we picked up down there. Um, we did pick up a lot of good stuff, but I think that was. I think that's probably the most important and the most informative uh, piece that we did. Then uh, some other stuff that we covered. I don't want to go into really everything uh, because uh, I don't want to ruin the surprise. And uh, that stuff's, you know, like I said, we're posting a lot of this raw content on Patreon. So go over there if you want to see it because it might be a minute before we put it on here. Um, so another thing that we did was we went, we did a tour of a couple different uh, neighborhoods. It was like pulling teeth, uh, to be on. I shouldn't say pulling teeth, but I was really wanting Ed to go to the east side of Tijuana. And he was just like, I don't think that's a good idea. You know, it's, it's not looking good. And I was like, well, let's go in the daytime. <laughs> so uh, he was on the last days like, all right, Let's go early in the morning, you know, before everybody's up. Let's just go as early as we can. And uh, thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. So so he was like, all right, we'll go early in the morning on the last day. So we went into, I think it was, I got to look at my uh, video. I think it was, I don't even want to say the name of the neighborhood on here because I'm going to butcher it. And I can't, I can't remember. Los Sanchez. The Los Sanchez neighborhood, according to Ed, is the most dangerous neighborhood in Tijuana. Uh, that's where a lot of the cartels are hiding out down there. So we went in. Uh, we did a two-car convoy. Uh, my film guy with the iPhone was sitting in the back seat. Me and Ed. Oh, I think Ed was in my vehicle, too. He was in the back seat. So it's me and uh, one of the armed guys. Um, up, He's up front. And Ed's kind of like giving us a, uh, a rundown of he's pointing out people that are on look uh, spotters on the on the side of the road. Uh, poor, poor, poor neighborhood. Very poor. You guys are going to get um, a ton of like raw footage from the car on what these neighborhoods uh, kind of look like. They kind of look like the favelas in Brazil. Uh, and um, and uh, anyway, so he's pointing out. You know, people that are communicating, lookouts for the cartels. Thank you. I appreciate that. Phytosaurus. And um, and I will keep bringing you truth. So, um, shit, where was I? Uh, Los Sanchez. So he's pointing out lookouts. He's pointing out people that are uh, kind of surveilling and how they communicate back and forth with each other. Um, and then... Uh, everything from fruit stands, thank you, Luis, to just people on the side of the road, uh, basically looking like bums, you know, just hanging out. And, uh, and he was pointing that out. He was pointing out different areas on why the cartels like to kind of set up in there. Luis, thank you if I didn't say that already. Uh, and he kind of pointed out that some of them are really hard to reach because they're on the side of these uh, cliffs. And, um, and uh, I never spent any time in Bogota. That's the only place that I just kind of refused to go in Colombia because 
whatever, that's another subject. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so we got some really good footage of all that shit in uh, Los Sanchez. Then we actually exited the vehicle, talked to one, bought some oranges from one of the lookouts, and uh, got all that on film. That burned us. Uh, what I mean by burned us is that immediately right there uh, through the communication network, uh, they did, they set out like, Hey, we got a uh, suspicious, you know, two vehicles side by side. This is the color, da, 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 da. you know, uh, we don't know why they're in this neighborhood. And, uh, so that, uh, so we got Ed picked up that traffic from one of his contacts saying that they were, they were saying, Hey, you know, it's time to roll. It's time to get out of here, you know? And, uh, so that's what we did. And all that shit's on film. It's pretty cool. So thank you, Cody Price. Thank you, Tonto Music. And uh, so all that stuff's coming. And uh, it's pretty cool because you see, you can see Ed getting kind of nervous in the back seat. He's like yelling at the driver, like, you need to hurry the hell up. Like, now we need to get out of this neighborhood now. And, uh, and we did. We got out. Everything's fine you know, 10 fingers, 10 toes, two arms, two legs. We're good. And, uh, everybody made it home safe. So on top of that, uh, that was a cool piece. It's very like, I think I'm going to have to commentate it when we put it all together because it's little chunks of like a minute here, a minute 30 there, 15 seconds here. Because like I said, we were kind of, I guess, technically undercover. And we were trying not to draw too much attention. So it was all it was all with an iPhone. And even with that, uh, we couldn't get everything. So uh, another thing we did is we went down, we talked to a reporter, talked to him a little bit about uh, some of the sex trafficking that's going on down there, went into the red light district, uh, actually wound up getting a lot of that on film, too, and uh, kind of talked about where these women are being tra trafficked from. How old are they? We're pretty sure we saw a group of girls down there uh, working, unfortunately, that were like underage, uh, which was really uh, that shit. Not a whole lot of shit bothers me. The child stuff really uh, gets to me. Um, but but anyways, talked a lot about where uh, these women are being trafficked from, how old they are. Some of them are getting conned into it. Some of them are um, are, are being forced into it and all that kind of stuff we got covered. Um, we didn't interview any women and, uh, we will blur all their faces out, uh, out of respect, obviously. So thank you, Mad Dog Morris. Appreciate that. And, um, <clears throat> so all that stuff's coming. What else did we cover? We talked a little about, I told you guys at the beginning of the year that I was really wanting to cover things on China. China, China, China. I think that's a major uh, concern to us here in the United States. Thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, so I, I wanted to start by covering that down in Mexico. So we went and found the Chinese consulate, which looks very similar to a safe house, um, just to kind of see what it looks like, see if we could get any movement. Uh, we didn't get anything. Uh, we just got, you know, some video of the consulate that looks like a safe house. And um, thank you, old man Gib. I appreciate that. I love being a father. Uh, best day of my life, man. And uh, thank you, Juliet, too. I really appreciate that. But um, where was I? Oh, so we just talked about some of the different ways that Chinese are conducting surveillance here and some of the ways that I've seen uh, the Chinese conduct surveillance outside of the U.S. Uh, when I was working for various agencies and uh, some of the things that I used to see and, and was just kind of curious if uh, if what they if, if what he saw down there was similar to what I saw uh, overseas. And there were definitely some similarities and there were definitely uh, some new stuff. It sounds like they're investing in a lot of real estate down there. So. Uh, that was interesting. I just want to say we're at 1,941 people watching now, and I'm pretty sure that's a record breaker. If we get to 1,000, 
it's definitely a record breaker. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so thank you guys all for watching. So, so, so we talked about the Chinese. We talked about the worst neighborhood. We talked about the migrant camp. We talked about the sex trafficking. A lot of the other stuff, we did walk the border. And uh, we did walk the border. And um, we looked at some of the neighborhoods that are right on the border. We climbed the wall. We saw where they're cutting holes in the wall and crawling through. Ed showed us how they're climbing over the wall. Um, what else? It, it, that's a cool little five-minute segment. I actually just released the raw footage of that on Patreon. If you want to go to Patreon, I believe it's tier two and up uh, can see that. So, but but it's cool video. Like I said, all this shit's like super raw. So there's nothing that's like high produced like the show or like some of the old tactical kind of shit that I used to do on this channel. Uh, it's nothing like that. It's all live phone footage. So, um, so that's cool. And that's like five minutes long, but yeah, we walk it, we talk about, um, the holes in it, how they're climbing it. We're talking about the neighborhood. We talk about how they ripped all the razor wire off the top of it in like the first two days. Um, so that's an interesting spot. Then from there, we actually went to a house. We could not get into it, but we went to a house where, um, the cartel, I can't remember which cartel did it, but the cartel, thank you, Corey. And we're at 1,969 people watching. We've got to get to 2,000. But we went to a house that the cartels had purchased. I believe he said it was whatever cartel. Uh, it was Ch El Chapo's cartel. But, uh, and this, isn't, this wasn't active anymore. But yeah, if everybody could hit the like button, that would be pretty badass. And we only need 25 more people. 14 more people. But um, so... Inside of that house that they purchased, they made, they, this is about five miles from the border. They dug a tunnel all the way into the United States uh, from that house. So basically what they're doing is purchasing houses and digging holes, uh, tunnels under the house. They'll basically gut the entire house, dig a tunnel. So you walk in the front door and it's dirt. A tunnel goes down and, and you walk all the way through the tunnel into the United States. And they have these houses everywhere. So, so it's like, it's crazy. Shit, we only need nine more people. And we got 2,000. Thank you. I can't pronounce your name. Uh, I really appreciate that. But, uh, and we just hit 2,000. Thank you. Hit the like button. Leave a comment below. This is cool. We just broke a record. Cheers to all of you. Pretty fucking cool way to end the week. Thank you, Mad Dog. And uh, I'm going to have to start a swear jar because I'm dropping F-bombs still. But uh, so anyway, so we, we saw that house, kind of talked about it. Another thing we did is we went and uh, talked about a whole shootout that Ed Calderon had down there. And... Uh, at a, at a Tijuana prison, and uh, what a disaster that was. Thank you, Semper Fi to you too, brother. But um, <clears throat> but uh, he kind of walks us through what was happening. It was a prison riot that went bad. Thank you, Michael. And um, and uh, and uh, we're gonna pull a bunch of footage up. Thank you, thank you again. And uh, we're gonna pull a bunch of footage. Uh, from when it happened, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was kind of early 2000s uh, when that happened. But he said people's heads were getting thrown over the wall, and it was just a complete disaster. He showed us holes uh, that had been patched where they were crawling through, uh, like the concrete wall uh, in the prison. They were trying to get out uh, several different locations. It, it was a nasty, nasty uh, gunfight it looked like. So thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. He said, it's the only thing that they've ever had where the, every unit, every station, doesn't matter what agency you work for, what police department, what fire department, everybody, uh, that was like, get everybody on scene right now. 
So uh, we got that from Ed. Shit, we just hit 2,100, man. That's awesome. And uh, that, I think I might be missing one or two things, but that pretty much covers it. I did uh, get video of me buying ivermectin. <laughs> I did get video of me buying ivermectin down there. And uh, so uh, there's that. <laughs> so there, I just got that just for the hell of it. I, I'm not even going to take ivermectin. I just think it's funny because it's it's so controversial here. Who would have thought that a, that a drug that you can get at freaking tractor supply or the pet stores has so much controversy, right? So anyway, so I went and uh, stocked up on some just to, you know, give out. But... <laughs> But uh, anyways, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, I like Corona. So that pretty much why that um, that kind of wraps up the Mexico trip. Ray, you're the man, dude. Thank you very much. Um, so that that pretty much wraps up the Mexico trip, at least. Uh, like I said, we're still kind of trying to figure out how to piece all that footage together. Um, and 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 I think it's going to wind up being a lot of raw footage. Well, it's all going to be raw footage and then uh, narrated as well. So I think it'll be kind of like, you know, we're down in Mexico and then screen changes. And it'll probably be me up in the studio here kind of explaining what we're doing. So and uh, like I said, guys, you know, thank you, Patreon. That's who allows all this stuff to happen. So uh, that's who basically funds all of it. So those are the my top supporters. I love them. Uh, I love you all too. Thank you for everything. But you know, on Patreon, that's 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 what makes all this happen. So I want to go to the border again, and if I start getting more patrons, then I'm going to start taking more trips and uh, doing stuff like that. Um, so. I already want to go to El Paso and check out the border down there uh, and and maybe even go into Juarez, Juarez. So um, <clears throat> right on, man. Cheers to you for being from Colombia. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. And T. Jackson, you're the man. Thank you. Um, so moving on. So I also told you guys that I wanted to cover China. I wanted to find the Ed Calderon or the Luis Chaparro of China, uh, somebody that's very knowledgeable about any particular you know, uh, aspect, if not all of it. And I've just been kind of striking out, striking out. I haven't been, uh, I haven't. I've been trying to get this guy, Josh Rogan, for a while. He's a he writes for the Washington Post, and um, <clears throat> and uh, I can't get his attention. But and then, uh, anyways, whatever. There's been a whole slew of of uh, experts that I've been wanting to get. I just haven't uh, been able to get their attention, or haven't been persistent enough. I I don't know. We're busy, <laughs> but uh, but what we did get is we just got. Peter Schweitzer. So some of you probably know who he is. Some of you are probably wondering who the hell is that? Um, he just wrote a book called Red Handed. And uh, basically, uh, he's talking about, thank you, Butch. He's talking about, um, he basically what he's talking about is how China is influencing all of these uh, prominent uh, figures here in the U.S., not just politicians, but I mean, we're talking uh, big tech, Wall Street, the education system, and politics, and uh, and uh, just dumb luck, and it was a total surprise that we picked up the interview, to be honest. I didn't think we were going to get it, but um, we got him, and his publicist said, you can only have him for an hour. He's busy. This guy's everywhere right now. This book is, it's the number one New York, it's been the New York Times bestseller two times in a row. And I'll post the uh, link to it at the bottom. I uh, probably should have done that before this, but, but two times bestseller, New York Times bestseller, uh, two weeks in a row. What am I, what the hell am I saying? I'm trying to read comments and 
and talk at the same time. No, I do not do uh, training anymore. I only do online training on Patreon. He was a New York Times bestseller two weeks in a row. There we go. Got it out. And uh, as of yesterday, he's the number one New York Times bestseller uh, uh, for two weeks in a row. So that's awesome. Um, but he he has uncovered all this uh, stuff on uh, how China is influencing all these different aspects of our country. Um, and so he has kind of broken that down into four different categories, big tech, Wall Street, education, and then uh, the politicals. And so he came here and uh, we had a conversation and I, I kind of walked him through the goal. I said, look, I don't want to like lean towards any side at all. I don't, that's not what I'm trying to do here. All I give a shit about is facts. I don't I don't want to lean to one side. I just want to present facts and let everybody, you know, come up with their own opinions. All we're doing is delivering information. I'm not trying to influence how you think. I'm just trying to to get the information that's not being covered on any of the news uh, to you guys. So and, you know, of course, with him, he did write, you know, there is a lot of stuff with the Bidens going on. And of course, all the news, that's all they want to I want to talk about is the Bidens, but there's so much more uh, on both the Republican side, on the Democratic side, and and then in in the different aspects of the businesses that I was talking about. So we start with big tech, and we talk about why China is influencing them, how they're influencing them, and what the goal is behind influencing them. And they are influencing everyone from Microsoft, Google. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, even Elon Musk, believe it or not. And uh, it's just very interesting uh, why they're doing it. And that's going to be in the episode. If you read the book, then you know, I don't want to ruin it. I just want to tell you kind of what the information is that's coming. Um, So we talk about all that stuff. Then we move into the educational system. Same thing. We talk about how they're funding all of these different uh, different parts of these universities. And even if it is illegal to accept money or you have to report all the money that is coming from a foreign country, especially that one, uh, how it's being funneled in uh, so that they don't have to report it. Or when they do report it, uh, they don't have to say it's from China. And it's actually as simple as moving it to an offshore account Basically, just a middleman. What they're doing is, if you're getting a teaser, but uh, you should, I should make you watch the episode. I shouldn't be telling you this shit. So, since I am, everybody give me a like, please hit the like button. <laughs> but uh, so, anyways, what they're doing, it's so easy. I mean, anybody could figure this out, but what they're doing is they're just moving the money to an offshore account, and then the offshore account moves the money. Uh, into whatever account here in the United States they're trying to get in. So, bam, swear drawer. I'll get one for the next time. But uh, it's just insane, you know, what they're doing. So then we move from the education system. We move into Wall Street. Uh, In Wall Street, we talk about uh, basically Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, Bridgewater, and Blackstone. We talk about how they're getting early access to different Chinese companies. That's kind of how they're influencing them and uh, and why not just see this. This is the good thing. He's not just uncovering all of the corruption and the dealings. He's talking about why this shit's happening, how it's happening, what China wants, what what these uh, different business entities and big tech, Wall Street and the education systems want. Uh, It's all, it's all like coming, it's all getting uncovered in, in a, in a bipartisan way. So, so we move out at Wall Street and then uh, we get into a little bit, we get into political. So he names a ton of people, I'll be right over there, man. But uh, will you close the door? Uh, I got it. 
but uh, yeah. Visitors, but uh, thank you, Ryan. So somebody text uh, in the chat where I was because my mind just went blank. Political. I'll just start over there. So uh, we talk about, we go over political. We cover, I believe, an equal amount of uh, Republicans and Democrats. I want to keep it as balanced as possible. Uh, thank you, Chris. I would love to have John Lovell on the show. If you guys want to have him on the show, why don't you all go on his last video and all of you leave a comment saying you need. <clears throat> Anyways, so do you want the names of who we uh Yes, I did wear the Rolex in Mexico. Um, are we still live? Yeah, we're good. All right. So I'll give you the names. You guys want the names of who uh, we kind of uncovered? I'll give them to you, even though I shouldn't. But uh, thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. So we started off with Mitch McConnell. He is the uh, lead Republican in the Senate. And we talk about his dealings uh, with China. Then we go into uh, Dianne Feinstein or Feinstein, however the hell you say it. Who cares? Uh, she's a turd. But uh, we talk about her computer company that she has over in China and how they sold laptops that were bugged to the Marine Corps. Nice. Nice. Nicely done. And uh, these are all people we elected. Great. And uh, then we move into the Bush family. We talk about what they're doing with China. We talk about Nancy Pelosi, uh, what her dealings are with China. And we talk about, of course, uh, the Bidens and how they're dealing with China. And this shit's scary. You guys need to pay attention to this stuff. Uh, this is, this is, you know, everybody seems to be concerned about the country. It doesn't matter whether you're on the right side or you're on the left side or you're in the middle. I think we can all fucking agree. There's another cuss word uh, that that things aren't going the way we want. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that you need to pay attention to because it affects all of us. And like I said, it's not just political, it's also big tech, Wall Street, and our education system. And uh, so anyways, it's it's an interview that's way different than anything I've done before. Um, I've never done anything like this before. Maybe the Blackwater one was kind of similar, but this is uh, some different style content uh, it's coming at you. It's coming at you fast and it's very eye opening. It's something we all need to pay attention to. And, um, you know, honestly, uh, now that that's it, that's all I'm going to tell you about kind of that interview. I'll tell you about the experience for a little bit though. Uh, this was totally unexpected. I didn't think we were actually going to get this guy. And then, uh, a friend of mine was like, I'll, I'll get him. I'm good at this shit. And I'll be, <laughs> I'll be damned if he got him. And so he got here, we interviewed him. We were told we would only have a, a one hour to interview this guy. And um, and uh, we wound up, I think he was here for like two and a half hours. And I'm pretty sure he was uh, late for his, next inter <laughs> for his next interview. But the interview is uh, sitting right at about an hour and 40 minutes. So after we cut, you know, uh, a little bit of the blank spots and stuff, um and edit it up then it it will probably be like right at uh 140 so uh an hour 40 minutes of just i mean get ready it's gonna be like drinking from a fire hose so um so that's that's that interview and honestly the interview is so good and the information is so pertinent that uh i know i'm behind in the editing can like i said i have justin hughes ahead of him and i have uh Nino Rodriguez uh ahead of him and then Peter uh Schweitzer should be three back but I think we're going to actually 
uh, reverse it. And uh, I think we're going to release that one first. So that's actually probably the next piece of content that you're going to see come out of this channel. So <clears throat> uh, maybe a little bitty something uh, with my wife, but thank you, Mandy. I appreciate it. And uh, where was I? So I think we're going to edit that one out early and uh, and get that to you guys as soon as possible. Probably, I'm hoping uh, it'll be ready to roll in a little bit over a week. So um, yeah, it's this is important stuff that we need to be paying attention to. It's it's like real news. It's like what the news used to do, you know, and uh, and uh, and it seems like nobody's doing it anymore. So. What else? So uh, that pretty much is kind of what I wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on. If everybody could give a like right now, then we're going to get 2,000 likes before this thing's even done. So uh, that's pretty cool. And um, so next thing I wanted to do is just tell you about some upcoming guests that I have coming on here. Um, so here we go. So upcoming guests, I believe the next guest that's here for an interview, uh, thank you, Rocky, I appreciate it, is going to be Luis Chaparro, and uh, he's been on the show before, so this will be like an exclusive, but Luis just went down, and he was in the, excuse me, Luis actually went down. He was just down in Mexico, too, getting more information. And uh, the information that he got is just awesome. I can't wait to interview him. I don't know too much other than just subjects because I don't I don't want to talk to him about it uh, before he's sitting in that chair up there uh, in the studio. But uh, he went down to Mexico. Last time we interviewed him, he was kind of out in the weeds uh, making the fentanyl paste or, or with the, thank you, Robert, making uh, the the fentanyl out in the woods. Not him, but the cartels he was documented. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, now he's down it with the chemists who turn the paste into the actual blue fentanyl pills that they smuggle into the United States. He's there with uh, going through that whole process. And uh, hold on. Have you heard of? I'll look into them. I'll look into them. If you could email that through the website, that would be cool. Because I'll actually uh, remember it and uh, we'll get in touch. But um, <clears throat> where was I? So, yeah, he's uh, down there. He's got he's he's documenting the chemist actually turning the 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 paste into the, into the fentanyl pill. And to prove that he was down there, and I don't know how I feel about this, but uh, I mean, you know, if you can kind of like, whatever, I'll just say it. He had the damn chemist wearing my, wearing my Vigilance Elite hat. And I was like, dude, uh, I can't be having the damn cartel rock my, my logo. People are, <laughs> people are going to get the wrong idea. But, um, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, he sent me pictures. I was like, holy shit. Like, you're like right there. So anyways, um, then after that, he went to down and did the, he was documenting the tactical training course that the Sinaloa cartel was going through. It's like, it would be like their, I guess their basic training or their, uh, what it's their tactics. It's them shooting, shooting and moving, all that kind of shit. It's going to be kind of weird interviewing Luis about that uh, because he doesn't really know much about tactics. So uh, I hope he has a bunch of footage because I want to see that stuff. And he had them wearing my hat too, which I was like, holy shit, dude, this isn't, you're going to get me on a, on a watch list or something. But, uh, but anyways, uh, like for what it is, he didn't mean anything by it. You know what I mean? And so, uh, I'm not going to get too fuck too freaking offended about it. It's not that big of a deal, but anyways, <clears throat> um, I can't wait to talk to him and see what the cartels are doing for training down there. That's going to be 
that's going to be awesome. So uh, to hear how they're doing it. Then he actually went and uh, he went to a party. He went to some party. He got invited by one of the one of the uh, kingpins down there, one of the bosses, and I believe it was a Sinaloa cartel. And uh, so he's going to tell us all about that experience as well. Because guy's only like 21 years old. Please hit the like button and get us to 2,000 likes if you're here. That would be awesome. I know there's there's more than, uh, you know, there's 2,100 people watching, which is a record, by the way. Thank you, guys. So, um, anyways, <clears throat> um, so Luis is coming. So that's going to be a really good discussion with him. Then we have uh, Eli Crane on the books, by the way. This stuff can always get canceled, so don't hold my feet to the fire. If it doesn't happen, it's not my fault. You know, there's a lot of a lot of hurdles these days to get over. You know, everything from it's hard to even catch a damn flight anymore. But uh, you know, with COVID and all the shit going on everywhere, and the weather, and people don't want to work anymore, it's it's affecting travel. So my plane my plane was late was was uh delayed from actually i think they just canceled it because i had to get on another flight but because nobody wanted to show up for work dude like seriously nope nobody wants to show up for work they didn't have flight attendants and they couldn't get anyone they, they couldn't get anyone to show up for work so they canceled the flight can you believe that shit like where do we even live anymore but uh, anyways, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so we got Eli Crane coming uh, to the show. He's a former SEAL that's running for Congress in Arizona. Uh, he was also on Shark Tank. I think uh, Cuban got him, uh, bought, bought his uh, or helped him out or whatever you want to invest in his company. And then who's after Eli Crane? drawing a blank we got um i'm only telling you guys the ones that are locked in you got to be on patreon if you want to know everybody we're looking at but uh who we're locked who we that's who we have locked in and then uh we also have uh shit this guy uh i'm not going to mention his name because i'm it's his name is uh nick levery i believe but he's a green beret and uh super cool dude and uh had his uh, leg blown off and uh and uh so he's coming here and uh I'm, we're gonna have a nice discussion we'd actually uh ran into each other uh a long time ago when i was in when i was working for the agency and uh he was a green beret so i uh, didn't even realize it until we were in like mid discussion um but so he uh will, is locked in we got a date and then we got a whole bunch of stuff uh, that we're looking for. Here's some topics that I want to cover. So if you know somebody uh, who is an expert on these topics, email through the website, please. And uh, that's the only way we're like guaranteed to see it is if you email it in through the website or suggest it on Patreon. Um, so one topic I would love to cover is the Epstein trials and the topic. So uh, I know there's a book that came out about it. I'm going to try to uh, ding that author and get them here. I would love to, um, to, to cover that topic because guess what? The news isn't covering it, you know? Doesn't that shit piss you guys off? But um, uh so I want to cover the Epstein topic and I want to talk about Russia too. So if you know anybody who's an expert on uh, Russia with everything that's going on right now, that would be uh, awesome. I would love that. So anyway, guys, I got to wrap this up and get home to my family, but uh, that's kind of what's coming down the pipes on this channel. Uh, like I said, you know, I, I've said it a couple times, we're broadening the channel. Um, you know, so we're not, we're definitely not leaving our uh, roots with the operator crowd. There'll always be 
American heroes on this channel. And, um, and, uh, we're just expanding our, 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 our audience a little bit in, in, in our type of content. So you're going to start seeing things like Peter Schweitzer and Luis Chapadro and, and, uh, hopefully Josh Rogan and, uh, you know, some of these other, some of these other people, you know, um, these are, we want to explore new topics and athletes, you know, we, we're going to start getting into athletes as well. So Dino Rodriguez, our first one, uh, heavyweight boxing champ. So anyways, I love you guys. If you want to see some of that Mexico content, it's on Patreon. If you do go on Patreon, it does help me out. And, uh, that's the support. And, uh, you know, if you can't though, I totally understand. So I'll tell you what I'll settle for. I'll settle for, I'll settle for an iTunes review so uh, or a Spotify review. But anyways, either way, I just want to thank you guys for being here. And, uh, and, and, and thank you, no matter how you support me, thank you for all the support. Thank you for just watching the content. You know, that means a lot. Uh, there's a lot of channels out there. There's a lot of good, good uh, content out there. And there's plenty of other stuff to be doing in the day. So the fact that you're actually giving me the time uh, probably, you know, means the most to me. So um, anyways, love you all. A lot of good stuff coming and uh, I'll see you soon.